What's up, fellas? Today, I'm bringing you the 2019 season simulation for Eastern Carolina. The Pirates had a couple technical difficulties, but the rest of the video will be as great as always. Let's check it out. gonna skip right into the class Eastern Carolina whiffs on the top recruit Brandon Gonzalez they do land a 70 overall kicker Matt Higgins congrats to Eastern Carolina for getting a 70 overall player let's go down to the bottom Isaac Butler as always we wish you good luck at seeing the field at Eastern Carolina 56 might see the field in his career Let's take a look at what happened this season. They rushed for 2,000 yards, school record, won an overtime game, won six games apparently. In conference, Eastern Carolina goes 6-6, six and 4-4 six, four and four in conference, but 6-6 six and six overall, only fourth best in the CUSA East, right? So, I mean, like, that's not a great year. Let's check out what happened on the schedule. They beat North Carolina State, beat an FCS team, lose to Navy, lose to Old Dominion beat Middle Tennessee, beat Marshall, and then lose to UAB and FAU. I mean, I guess the FAU is a close game. And they win over number 16 ranked Tulsa in overtime. And then they lose to Tulane and Florida International. They beat Southern Miss to end the year. That's a pretty good win over a 4-8 and team, I guess. But they beat a 10-2 and Tulsa team. Pretty shocking. Let's check out what happened in the rest of the CUSA. Eastern Carolina comes in 7th. Florida Atlantic atop the CUSA. We're kind of used to seeing that. We see Tulsa and Florida kind of at the top in these simulations. This year, they really expect a lot from Tulsa. Pretty good year for those teams. The Eastern Carolina, 6-6, six six, 500, kind of an average year. But let's check out what happened in the rest of college football. Top 25, here we go. Michigan, number one. Alabama, number two. Both receiving almost half. The first place votes. Michigan and Alabama 11 and 1. Washington, AM, Ohio State round out the top five. See South Carolina, Stanford, Oregon, Georgia, and Florida State rounding out the top 10. Kind of the usual players, like no shockers. I mean, Oregon typically doesn't go 10 and 2 in these simulations. South Carolina went 11 and 1. That's pretty cool. We see Tulsa there. We do see SMU at number 13 and Arizona at 12. That's kind of a shocker. UCF all the way at 21. Clemson at 19. LSU rounding out the top 25 at number 25. Michigan and Alabama playing some pretty heavy games in their conference schedule, right? And then we got a couple teams that aren't playing. I want if if they lose those games, those three teams behind them could jump them. And South Carolina playing Alabama, that might be able to jump all the way to number two or number one. So we got to check out what happens in the simulation. Najee Harris wins the Heisman. Over 1,400 yards on the ground, 17 touchdowns on the ground, 500 yards receiving, and four touchdowns. Pretty solid year for Heisman. All halfbacks, you see Harris, Dattle, Akers, Scarlett, and Piran. Kind of the usual guys other than Dattle there, but congrats to you, Najee. Alabama, Michigan both win their conference games. Alabama actually overtook Michigan for the number one spot. Yes, correct. Alabama took over for Michigan beating a tougher opponent in South Carolina than Iowa. But Michigan beat their opponent 49-6. to Holy crap. Let's check out what happened in the national championship. We do see Michigan going 13-1, and ending up number one, beating Alabama 32-21. to Pretty sh good shellac in there. A&M ends the year number two at 10-3. and That's kind of a shocker. 10-3? and Wow, Washington and Ohio State go 11-2. and and end up behind Texas A&M. Must have been a heck of a year. Let's check out ECU here. Oh yeah, they're not in a bowl. Never mind. Sorry, ECU fans. Let's check out what happened in the national championship here. We got to see how Alabama gets shellacked by Michigan. Here we go. Three to seven after one. Ten to fourteen. Alabama at halftime. Michigan goes down twenty-one to thirteen. And then the score's 19 unanswered in the last quarter. Alabama, where's that defense? Let's check this out. Michigan, tie, or touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. Wow. That's a shocking end. You almost never see 19 unanswered points in a fourth quarter. 400 yards of offense for both teams. 195 on the ground for Michigan, 244 for Alabama. 
226 through the air for Michigan. That seems to be the big difference in the game. Though Alabama did have 153 through the air. So it's, I mean, they were kind of, kind of even on offense. Four down conversions, though Alabama only one for three. And two point conversions, Michigan zero for two. Though I think it comes down to the red zone and the turnovers. Alabama only 66% with one turnover. And time of possession, of course, goes to Michigan. When you run the ball well, typically you'll score and have more time of possession. But if you've stuck around this long, I appreciate you. Let's check out the season stats. Ehlers, good for 2,200 yards, 63 overall in the country. Not bad for a quarterback from ECU, but they, I bet they miss Lincoln Riley in their top offenses. Pinnix, 884 yards, 104th in the country for a running back. Not shabby. Farrier, 757 yards, receiving 80th in the country. Could be a little bit of improvement there. Rams are 43 tackles, 19th in the country. Hardy, 118th in the country, 4.5 sacks. Not enough. Robinson did have six interceptions, good for sixth in the country. That's pretty good for uh, ECU over here. And then, of course, the kicking leaders, we've got to check it out. Verity, good from 55. That's massive. You're going to win games if you have a good kicker. Fourth overall in the country, Eastern Carolina, 6-6 six and six on the year. 2019-2020, Eastern Carolina, good luck. I'm out. Peace.